Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, I picked up this machine on Facebook Marketplace. It's kind of a cross between, uh, I'm gonna say like a forklift or a pallet handler and or a man lift. It's kind of a cross between the two of them. It's called a Big Joe. And yeah, it's, yeah, Big Joe up there. And uh, this was on Facebook Marketplace. It said it still went up and down, but the forward and reverse stopped working on it and they were kind of done with it. They had it on there for 500 bucks. I wanted to make a project out of something and I figured this would kind of fit the bill if it did not go up and down. Anyway, it was 500 bucks they were asking. I said, sure, that's fine. And uh, there was a woman that was selling it. She said, let me have my guys quickly go over it and make sure it still does what it's supposed to do. And it did not. She called me back, says it is not working. I can't have my guys working on it any longer than that. So I said, well, what do you want for it as is? And she said, 300 bucks. I said, well, we're close enough. Let's go, um, I'll come over and take a look at it and uh, we'll figure it out from there. So when I looked at it and I kind of, the switch is missing from it, hardware's taken out of it. There's a bowl of hardware that came with it. That's been busted off on the inside there. Like I took a hit or a fall or not quite sure what happened there. But anyway, uh, so we kind of settled on 200 bucks and here we are. So <laughs> it does not do anything. Well, I haven't tried to do anything with it, but they were not able to get it to do anything. So I figured we can go look into that to make for a good video. If we are able to figure out what is wrong with it and or modify it just so it goes back up and down again, uh, we will continue on with a little project I have going on. So they have no batteries with it. I think it is 24 volt system. That platform I think is about three feet by five feet, just to give you kind of a visual. And that like you would hang a harness from that loop up in the center of it and then had a little safety chains that went around and kind of locked you in until you would uh, pull a package onto here and then let yourself back down again. Uh, yeah, over here is where the batteries go. So we're going to start screwing with it and see what we can do. There's a little panel on it for those who care. I believe it says it can lift a 650 including um, whatever passengers that are on it. I don't need to do that much and well, actually, yeah, that's, that's probably a pretty good number. I kind of want to use it for uh, motorcycles, scooters, uh, you know, garden tractors, that kind of thing. And, you know, the weight limit should be uh, acceptable for us. All right, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go and see what we can go do with it. Let's go grab a couple of batteries or something to throw in there and see what happens. How about one of those? One of those. So I think we've got two, it's like two separate circuits. All right, and they are not marked. This one has boots on it. One's black, one's red, so maybe we'll use that for the upper. <laughs> Sparks come out, we'll see. All right, so that's gonna be hot. That's gonna be ground. That jumper pack's already on. Call this one. We'll call that ground. And this one hot. <laughs> All right. Gotta separate these a little bit. Let's go look at that control panel. All right. Let's see what we see on here. I see a power switch here. All right. <laughs> and I think it has. Right here. Yeah. We got nothing. I do see they got like the switch isn't even on it. It's not even in there. And it looks like they were starting to take some stuff apart. It's, like it's got one bolt holding this whole cover on. Let's pop this up out of our way. What's going to be in our way? What's this? It's like a reservoir fill. Yeah. And you get that knob off and that bolt out. What about this? Looks like that's how you swap from charging it. And you swap the plug from one to another. All right, let's go get that little handle off. That size? All right. I think there's a washer there. Good. I got the bolt in the corner. Let me grab a container to put our hardware in. 
This is some of the stuff that was laying on top of it when I went over to go get it. Let's add to the pile. That do it for us? Well, it's connected or not. Some kind of... Hmm. I think that plug just unplugged itself as we were taking it apart, huh? Let's, um... Let disconnect those batteries real quick. <laughs> that might be a good idea. And we'll kind of take a peek what's happening in there. Let's see what we got. We got some stuff unplugged. Let's get a reset there. I think this one came off when we were undoing it. Now that go to. It's got a big old master relay there. Probably turning power on. That's looking a little cruddy, huh? Green on them. Well, there's the ignition switch. <laughs> you know, that must get plugged into the other plug that was on there. And we got one more wire hanging. Anything else? A little transformer. That's probably for charging, right? Yeah, so that's the charge plug you would put in when you like let it sit overnight and you swap that plug over. That's the transformer would charge the two batteries. And it looks like maybe that's like a reset button right there. Let's um we got we got one here. We got the ignition, so we'll just go plug some of this stuff back in and see what we get. It's not gonna work without that, right? With the ignition, so oh, there it is. So I'm gonna guess it's the one with the the red. Are they the same? This one's got fatter plugs on it. I'm gonna say that's a match. Let me get this control panel closer. They're blocking you. So, um, it's um gonna reach for us. Let's just go plug some stuff in. We got no power on anything yet, so. There's little uh, pins in there, kind of kicked over to the side. Let's go get a little pick or something to straighten them out. Be funny if that was the problem, right? Got it. And we got one more wire. There's only one spot for it to go. Let's see what that does. Alright. So we have a key now, right? Let's go find. There's the key that came in. Let's uh, turn the power on. We gotta plug this in. The back one's to run it. Yep. Let's go throw that one in. And we got turn the key on. Nothing. <laughs> Where's that big red button? I think we have to hit that, right? That did something. Heard something latch. Let's go. Might be these, right? I'm making noise now. <laughs> ah, does it go down? Look at that. Something's making a clunky noise on the other side. Let's see what's gonna happen. Awesome. 
Well, that was simple. You can say it's gonna stay working. Oh, I think a, looks like a chain is off, one of the two chains. I see it hanging. It's got two chains that go over the piston. There's one right there and the other one's missing. It's hanging down in there. Let's, um, I think we're gonna need some slack to get that on there. Let's uh, maybe get a couple of saw horses. We'll let it down on saw horses and see if we can, we can get that chain back up on there. That may just happen from transporting it, you know, the bouncing of it. All right, it goes up now. <laughs> I don't know about moving forward and back yet. We'll kind of get in that in a second. Let's go get that uh, chain squared away first. Yeah, I wonder if it's just that plug that was there that the uh, thing was kind of... Whoa! <laughs> Let's go up a hair. <laughs> I it showed the whole thing. The center of gravity is probably right about there. As soon as I took some of the weight off the front, she kind of bounced on that rear wheel. I think we should probably get, be able to get a floor jack or something underneath the ass end of it. Almost flipped it. All right, so we gotta get that chain. So does the other one have slack in it now? It should. No. So if that doesn't have slack in it, we're not gonna be able to get the other chain on. How am I gonna go about, do I have to let it down more? Will it even go down more? Let's try to lighten that piston. Stand it on, see what happens. Yeah, it's all the way down right now. Hmm. How can we get that on there? We gotta get it so that, they like said, if this one has slack in it, we can get the other one. How would we do that? We'd have to get that piston to go down more by itself, right? Let me just, um, you know. Or we can hold the button and pull on the chain a little bit so we can get that to kind of shrink down just a little bit. Safety third. All right, can I grab that chain? And I went down, correct? Yes. Enough, but I got I got slack in the chain now. Gotta be able to get it enough to get it up over the other pulley though. Let's see if we can snake that up. close <laughs> I think the chances are if we run it up a little it'll just pop itself on maybe try it let's see it I'll go for a ride with it making weird noises uh, I don't know about that <laughs> There's that. I gotta get more slack in it. I don't wanna crack that top fitting, you know? Yeah, if it would've worked, it'd been a good idea. Let's get a come along on it and see if we can um, get a little bit more play out of it. There it goes. Now we got room. 
All right, let's try that again. I should be able to wiggle that chain right on there now. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get it in your mind, things are just gonna work out. Plus you get cocky because you get it to work within about five minutes of screwing around with it. Yeah, I lifted it up now. This is in the way. I can't get the chain over the sprocket. Can we take this arm off? Will that give us enough room? We're gonna get rid of it anyway. We're not gonna need it yet. Let's go grab an impact gun. We'll get rid of this. And then we should get that chain on there. Plenty of slack now. Going the right way. Looks like it's got a little bit of weight to it, huh? Three quarters of an inch thicker steel. Oh, yeah. She drops down pretty far too. It's not jammed up in that roller, is it? We can spin it out with the socket. Just waiting for the whole platform to come crashing down. All right, let's get that out. There we go. It's adjustable. We got different teeth on it. I make a meat, meat something in the future. Third time's a charm, right? We got it? Yeah, all right. So what I gotta do, we gotta take the come along off and raise it up. That should do it for us, I think. want to raise yourself up, right? Uh-oh. Clicked herself off. Let's go. She's alive. Uh, good. <laughs> you want to, we can get the, the jack stands and crap out of there. We'll let it back down. Let's, um, just for shits and giggles, see if the forward and reverse, it's up in the air, shouldn't it? Yeah, we had nothing. This is a automatic reverse, right? You, if this bumps against you, it, like if you back yourself into a corner, Kind of like a safety, I think. Yeah, but that's still not working. All right, let's, um, I'm gonna go clean up some junk around here. We'll get it organized. And we'll pop some covers off. We'll just, for, we'll screw with it a little bit. See if we can get the forward to reverse to work. I think taking a one piece of metal off, gained just 50 pounds alone. We'll run it up. Let's go just, hmm. look there, relay's clicking off. I wonder if because we are using like jumper packs, we don't have the uh, amperage behind it. Let's go start screwing around with um, the forward and reverse. Let's go pop that side cover off. We'll see what's inside there. Will we need a, a Phillips? Ah, 
I'll tell you that hasn't been a part in a while. What if we're missing one of these for the other side where the batteries are? This cover. So that looks like the hydraulic pump. I see a safety switch here. I bet you that's, that's probably the hydraulic pump for up and down, not for moving it. Let's um, give her a little feel. Yeah. Yeah, this is for hydraulic up and down. So we got this black cover in the back here. Let's, um, what do we got to do to access this one? I wonder if we could pop this back down too. I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to put that ignition switch up in the hole. Let's get this cover back to where it was and out of harm's way a little bit. We'll still leave it loose in case we need to get in there. Plug back on. Still everything still working? Seems like it. Let's go. Let's bump that real quick. We have no no oh. Duh. <laughs> there we go. Alright, let's see about getting that off of there. So you got one bolt, I think, holding this on too. They were in and everything, you know. They, uh, be nice if we find something just unplugged. <laughs> I don't think we can uh, strike gold twice. Get this out of our way. Hey, see what it's got for guts. Got all kinds of stuff. All kinds of wires and guys. I wish I don't see a wiring diagram. Get you in closer. Uh, it looks like it runs a big electric motor steering up through the handlebars and then just down to that wheel right there. What we got for... I'm gonna guess that's power coming in to make the 24 volts. That's a big ass fuse right there. We could probably even just kind of jump across that. I don't know if that's for would that make everything dead? These look like solenoids. I don't know again if they're for forward and reverse and or uh, the up and down part of it. Is that plug? Let's get a light mounted somewhere. Let me um, unplug that main power. Do you think like this plug kind of looks a little weird, doesn't it? Like it would it should be mounted in something? Maybe not. I don't see any mice damage anywhere. Let's um got a couple fuses. What's that fuse right there? You would think they would have checked that though, right? Yeah, it looks okay. We'll take a meter and we'll go across some of that stuff. Could be just that this motor is burned out too, but hmm. Yeah, let's go check a couple of big fuses real quick, and then maybe uh, we'll look into like does that got corrosion going on it? What is that white right there? Yeah. Let's go poke around a little bit. Let's go. So the wires going from that. Let me get off the thing, make a noise. There we go. Alright, looks like it's just got two big power leads coming off that motor. They go up into here. I wonder if they're just these guys. You know what we could do? We could turn it on too. And we could uh, power, see if these click for the up and down. And what would tell them to go? It would be a signal from the handlebar, right? So we gotta go up. Somebody's been monkeying around with this too, huh? Okay, missing a bolt. It's missing a bolt, it's not in the center. I 
I think it'll... I'm kind of wondering if it's just not being told told what to do. The power's disconnected. I wonder if we can... Um, let's go just probe around a little bit. Let's see if we got power or not power to. I don't want to spend a ton of time with this, but if we can get it to work, that'd be neat, huh? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we have power to any of those relays coming in. I do see some corrosion growing on them. Especially on the bottom one right there, huh? So I would think, and it's got a relay on each side too. Hmm. We get a jumper wire, maybe we could jump the solenoid and give it a little bit of power and just see if anything kind of goes to move or do anything. <laughs> so I took a test light, I was kind of probing around a little bit, see if I could see where I got power on and off. Generally like on a, on a car's 12 volt system, you take a test light, one end of it, you ground to the chassis, and the other way you go probe and you see we have power and you don't have. I was gonna try to do that here, but I am not getting anything due to the fact that um, it's on a 24 volt system and it doesn't seem like they're tapping into the chassis for ground anywhere. So it's not looking at none of the hot, the, none of the battery setup seems like it's tied to anywhere in the chassis whatsoever. They just kind of, uh, everything is uh, kept isolated. So it doesn't quite operate like I think it should or would. But one thing that does concern me, and I figure we'll just go jump ahead in a different direction is, looks like that big crash that happened there where that handle's kind of like busted right out of there. I kind of wonder if something is wrong with the controller part of it. So while we're going around here, there's a crack right there too. Let's go pop this cover off and we'll go see what's up with the uh, wiring that's inside here. See if there's a switch or something that's kind of funky. And if that doesn't work, I think what we might just try and do is we'll try jumping power to those solenoids and see if we can get those solenoids just to fire. And if they fire, they might have the wheel go you know, forward or backwards one direction. Remember the old days when you would have a, you'd buy something, you, you take a cover off and there'd be a wiring diagram right inside it. Be like a, your dryer or a, we had a microwave, I'm trying to think of it. It was, it was one of the higher end ones, you know, from the seventies. Took the cover off in a plastic bag was the wiring diagram for it. Not anymore. Be a quick search on the internet and see anything neither. So we're kind of on our own for poking and hoping. Alright, let's see what we have going on inside here. Let's see if any of this stuff even moves. Uh, I don't think it's got a light down on it. Let's see anything obviously broken or falling off. You? See two micro switches down there. It looks like that you make or break. Two little red buttons on them. Let's see if you can see them. See if they're, they're going down all the way. The one closest to us is. There you see it. I'm looking down inside there. It looks like they're making the movement. Let's, um,. I would think that big fuse would be power for everything. I don't, I don't think it would isolate it. Let's go just take an ohmmeter across that big ass uh, fuse right there and make sure we're, we're okay on that. So what do you think a yellow flashing status light means? I would think it would be green for go, right? DC motor contector. Hmm. Void if seal is broken. I think we're uh, beyond that. All right, let's go uh, again. Just go check that fuse out real quick. I'm gonna plug that main power. There's no power going through it. Now this still may go and say it's okay. Uh... Yeah, it may say it's okay just because it's bolted in place and it uses another path to jump across it. Let's uh, grab a screwdriver. We'll unscrew one side of it and, and pull it away. and We'll just disconnect it. Because sometimes there's other paths that are, are doing the uh, connection. 
like I said, I kind of doubt it because I would think if that was the case, it wouldn't have power for um, the up and down. And we don't have a wiring diagram, so we're just trying to wing it. It's uh, losing the hardware. Okay. Okay, let's go. Take that out of the circuit. Nothing else is touching it. Now we'll try it again. Yeah, that fuse is fine. It has nothing to do with that. Open. Closed. Okay, we'll put that back together. I think I might, um, I, I just don't want to cook anything for the up and down. Like I said, I'm not really concerned about this thing ever being able to drive around again. It may not hurt, but it's really not our priority. Let's go and um, put that back together and maybe throw that on the floor. Take a, uh, a jumper wire. We'll try jumping across the relay. We'll see if we get anything to kind of go do anything. I'm going to give this about another five or ten minutes of screwing with it and then there we go. Start cutting it up. <laughs> Live on the edge. Let's go hook to that terminal. And I don't know if we want to just we'll give it. <laughs> Uh, something's clicking. It, it is clicking that motor. My guess is it probably has to run a couple of things at the same time. I don't think there's any on the bottom. Let's go try that on the other one. Yeah. This should, if we get that motor spin, then we know we got it. It's, um... Let me uh, try giving it some throttle. That will work that linkage up there. I've been like probing, prodding around and looking at different things, trying to just see what we got going on. I see a relay back here. It's kind of looking like, you can see it. it, kind of filled up with water and rust. That's just the look of it, or is that, that brown kind of look a little suspicious to you? Let's uh, see if that one screw will loosen up. See if we could pull that relay out here. We'll take a peek at it. See if there's got, uh, that's any of our issues. I don't know about you, but I can see that causing some problems. <laughs> There's that, right? I wonder if um, any possible chance we could take it apart and clean it. Get the screw out of it. Yeah. I'm going to go take a picture of those wires. I may label them too. I'm going to go take a, a moment, kind of write them down. Let's go take that apart. I wonder if we could order one of those. And it's definitely not doing what it's supposed to be doing. I would think that uh, if minimum, even if that's for the up and down, it's not going to uh, maintain itself, right? So, yeah, we go mark them real quick where they are and uh, we'll disconnect that. What if we disconnect it? If we, we'll see if the up and down still works. And then we'll kind of know that, you know, that's not for that, that it may be for the drive part of it. And I'll explain some things. <laughs> well, there's your problem. Hey. Mark the wires, the little dots on them, kind of made ourselves a little cheat sheet and took a picture of my phone, that kind of stuff. Let's um, power it back up. I want to see if the up and down still works because it did, it did kick out on us too, right? So let's go see if it'll do anything. Still latched. All right, let's see if this still works. Now, doesn't, is the key on? Key's on. So it actually was going through that relay, whatever, <laughs> for the up and down. It's probably why it kicked that breaker out too when it, I went to go move it up and it shut off. And so going through there is definitely going to need to be addressed for us to have longevity. Let's, um, 
I'm not forgetting anything, am I? Go turn the key off and on real quick. And me... Seems like I stayed reset. Yeah. Just the buzzer works. Okay. So that may have been what the problem they were having in the first time. They kind of, we just got lucky and it, it powered up and it started doing what it was doing. Let's go uh, pick away at that relay and see if we can uh, possibly bring it back to life. I go over to the bench to see if we can uh, have a stab at getting this case open. Not stab myself in the finger. Sometimes they're glued. Seems kind of dumb to um, have the relay facing that direction though, doesn't it? You would think you would flip it. The idea of having a case on it is to shed stuff in the other direction. Problem is this side's gonna it's gonna pop back in when I go to do this side. Come on, get out of there. We're in the pool. Yeesh. <coughs> Excuse me. So generally a little solenoid would fire and that would move between those two locations like that. Let's um I think the best way to clean that up. Let's go see what's in here. That's a lot of mud. That's a lot of rust that came out of there, though. Where did all that? Where did all that debris come from, right? What, like what rotted off of it that caused that much? I'm gonna take an air gun and a little points file. We'll clean up these little contacts on here, and we'll uh, hook, just hook it back up. See what we get. I kind of wonder if this this. DC solenoid does not pull in anymore. We'll leave the cover off too. Maybe we can even like fire it by hand. Yeah, let's give her brake clean at least, you know. It definitely seems like a lot of rust came from from somewhere. I don't know, maybe that's what bled down on top of it with the water. That's a, that's a lot, you know? Maybe like a whole thing that dissolved and we don't even see it anymore. I'm right, gonna go clean them. Let's go get ourselves, get ourselves, get ourselves a little uh, points file, dry, dry across that. And uh, we'll dry it out with compressed air. like points on a car really definitely just not gonna hurt it I'll take that number down at least it's in a place where it's, it's fairly fairly easy to access under that cover we can continue what we're doing I'm gonna try to order a new one though just because I don't think the longevity of this one's gonna be that great Imagine buying a flood car. Every single component's like this. Right. Let's um, call it for that. That's better. Get a good grind on it. I'm gonna blow them out. I'm gonna look underneath the scope real quick. See if I see any kind of crud on them. I'll, I may work on them just a, a hair more. Just to make sure that they're going to do what we need them to do. And uh, we'll leave the cover off. We'll uh, try it first by itself and then maybe we'll try manually firing it. See if anything happens. Hey, we got our plug back in there. Let's um, power ourselves back up. Key on. No, we're not getting the latching. What do I not have right? It didn't like that. It couldn't be well enough alone. Do I have anything else apart? We're not getting that. That big relay's not clicking in and latching. Let's um, let me fire this by hand. Uh 
doesn't make any difference. Hmm. Because it was already pulled in, that's why. There it goes. <laughs> Alright, see? And as soon as I went to go move it, kicked out. Yeah. Kicking it right out now. Let's, um, by firing that relay, see if it works. You know what? I wonder if my battery voltage is getting low in those jumper packs. I'm gonna go do a little shopping and go grab some batteries and come right back. Alright, so let's replace those with those. I see if that made any difference. I think a louder click. Let's see if it could go up there. Yeah. Good. <laughs> you want to try forward and reverse? We're going to get real brave. Let's go see if this. Uh... No. So I think that relay was for the up and down. And it's probably the problem that they were having. We just got lucky when we kind of put everything back together and it decided to work. So let's. Um... I'm gonna try holding you in the stand. We're gonna see if that relay clicks back and forth when we go for up and down. What's uh, what's it do now if we do anything? Yeah, let's go hit the buttons and see if that works that way. All right, so let's see if this clicks. Oh, I try to hit the up and down. No. Wiring goes through it for something. I, um, let's go. Try firing that relay by hand, and we'll see if the forward and reverse works. It's kind of hard to. There we go. Now, I'm not quite sure. It's like right now it's energized, right? So it's. Let me uh, kill power. See if that that relay opens up. Yeah. So the relay is working. It's pulling in. And I have a feeling, yeah, when I hit the power, it, it latches this together, makes the circuit work. And when it's doing that, it's allowing the up and down to go. So that's what it does. And I'm still going to try to order another one because that's just so cruddy, but. Thought we had something there. Definitely need to be addressed though. That was, that was its issue. They probably stored it outside when it wasn't working. I bet they stored it outside in the uh, weather. Got the best of it. So it was like that, right? And then we just gotta bolt that back to there. It's always gonna be indoors for us, but I'm gonna leave that loose for now until I, uh, if, if I'm able to get one, I'll just change it. If not, I'll screw that back up. All right, just when I was about ready to give it up, the uh, I'm looking at the handlebar, and you would think if the handlebar is all the way in the up position, it probably shuts itself off. So it would have a switch for that. So I see a micro switch right there. I don't know if it's got any wires still connected to it or not. I do see something going to it. But I would think it would hit this cam right here. But that has walked off its center. I don't know if it's doing anything or not. And it, that doesn't get latched. I don't think it would ever want to try to turn on. Does this cap come off? I don't think so, right? Yeah, it's part of the, the whole stem going through. What can we do to get to that? It's like somebody kind of tweaked it. It looks like the, the bottom's just busted right out of it, doesn't it? Yeah, I bet you it rubbed up against this and that has walked over. Since you actually kind of see some marks where it was. I do believe the cap will come off of there. There we go. I can see the back of the switch. 
The switch is definitely busted. I looked from underneath with a mirror and the switch part of the switch is gone, whether they bypassed it or not. So it's gonna be those, is it two wires? Let's try pulling those two out of there because the switch itself, the face of it is missing. Um, right where you see like, let me get a good light. Right that, right there. The switch face would be right there, but it's busted right off. It's busted right off because this cam was allowed to come up too far because this casing is busted and it trashed the switch. So I think I might think that it's always open. Let's go yank those two little wires out of there and put a jumper on it, see if we get anything out of it. I got power disconnected, so everything's off. Let's go. Get them out of there. It's wrong. It doesn't really matter their position. I think it just has to make a jump going across. Let's get them up in the air. And we just kind of cross them together. All right. <laughs> Let's hook power back up. And hit the button. And let's see if forward and reverse does anything. Nothing. <laughs> oh well. We did try. Let's um, try opening the circuit. Hmm. Let me see if uh, the up and down still works. Yeah, but it did draw a spark when it um. Ooh, a little tingle. So that, that does pull in some relay. I'm going to go try to see which one it is. Feels like the motor itself clicks. I don't know if that's a brake or something, maybe. It does seem like it does energize a brake, probably inside. Maybe when the handlebar's all the way up, it thinks it's, um, because yeah, we still don't have any forward and reverse, though. So. Oh, well. I've given it as much time as I want to put into it. <laughs> I've said that three times already, at least. Not our, not our issue, I guess. Yeah, I think that is for a brake. I mean, when you flip the handlebar up, it uh, applies a brake so it doesn't want to roll, is my guess. And the fact that it wasn't working did not mess anything up. It just didn't have that safety. Thought I had it. <laughs> Look, see all this caging is gonna go away. I wanna get this uh, power switch off of this frame here. It looks like it's got a wire going down below for um, the the buzzer when it was lowering, and the rest of it's kind of hooked up to a switch here. So we got to get the face of it off. Whoa! There's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff, huh? Hopefully that can fit through that opening without and wiring everything. So all right, the wire's going down lower. Power's off. So we got that one for the buzzer. I got this one. I'm gonna go take a picture with my phone. We'll take one, two. Actually, this one's fine. It has nothing to do with it. The green wire is not part of it. And of course, they got a butt connector on that one. Let's see if we can. Uh... You waiting for sparks, aren't you? <laughs> Where does that one go? It's right up through the switch to nothing. So we're gonna go cut that one. So we know where that one goes. And the only other one is the black one here. So I don't think that'll screw with the effect of how it works. Let's get that out of there. Come on. 
thought we were going to be able to stink it out. Won't let us. Let's get rid of that. And we'll put it back together. We should probably test it right now, right? That's not connected to anything. I think it's just going to work the buzzer is all it's going to do. We're going to go for broke. All right, so that one's out and we got to go cut that one. We can pull this wire out of the bottom of it and hopefully get the whole switch out through that hole. We should be able to snip this one. Let it tingle to it. Just back that nut off of that. Get that out of the way. Should be screwed to the cage. One there and one there. A couple of Phillips. Should take that off. We should be able to get this whole thing up out of here. Come on. Oh yeah. Now we don't have to send that up with it. We can kind of power the whole thing up and down manually. I'm gonna go put this cover back on. We'll power it back up without this, the the uh, buzzer, and we'll see if it still works. Yeah, see what happens. Yeah, it just doesn't have the alarm. But now we're, we're free with this. Let's go back up. Let's go send it all the way up. Make sure we don't have any issues with it. Let's bring her all the way up to it. I think it's like 12 feet, 12 and a half feet. Plus, we can kind of stand away from it in case it falls over. <laughs> Shoots right off the top. I don't know if I want to go any higher. <laughs> Comes right out of the track. And it's up there. There it goes. And just a little shy of this thing. I'd say it's about 12 feet. Let's go eyeball it. Put the controller down. Feel nervous? Especially the fact that uh, we're sitting on two by fours. <laughs> it's not even on its wheels. So it looks pretty decent. Yeah, don't stand under it. <laughs> Gotta got that. All right, so we want to take that platform and modify it so that it does that same thing, but roughly you know, like about a four by eight sheet is the diameter that we're going to try and go for. And the problem is we're going to start adding weight to it. So I think we could steal some of the components off of it. Let's go let it back down again. And start looking at what we do not need. Maybe we can like, you know, rob Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, that's where that little beeper alarm is right there that we disconnected. A little white switch. Uh -huh. The chains look good. Go bring it up a little. There we go. All right, so stuff we do not need. We do not need these pieces on the corners. That whole cage in the back. Can we get rid of all that? Do we need, is it touching? And none of this is touching this. The only place it has anything is right here. So all of this on the back can disappear. We can get rid of all this. I don't know, maybe we'll cut it right here. Because that's, you know, that's part of the strength of the, the base of it. Yeah, I don't see any reason why we can't take a whiz wheel. We'll slice all this. We could probably even use this framing for whatever weight comes off of here is what gets added to it, right? So. And then we got to see about the decking. So we'll cut these off. We'll cut that back off flush with right there cut these all the way across here and we'll just get us down to this base platform so i'm going to save your eyeballs and your ears and i'll probably bring you back when i chop most of that off of there and then we'll start seeing what we can do to modify the the base of it to make it larger
That was easy. Go do another one. Let's see how it works on that fence material. I should probably move from the back side. Shoot the sparks the other direction. Thread them. And it's got to be about 100 pounds right there. So we got those have to get pulled out. I'm surprised they didn't even just cut right through them when I did that. Now you know if we're ever going to even hook that up again. Uh, let me go pull the wire out of this part of it and then we'll get that out of the way. Well, I say between that three quarter inch hunk of steel, those two bars that the yeah, I don't know what the wall thick and quarter inch maybe on those probably the same one those look actually a little thinner that one's a little thinner and then this is also one inch thick steel going across it that support that it hung so I think we probably took about two 250 off of it and we are going to be adding material back to it again and making this deck a little bit bigger let's run it up in the air and we'll start getting a battle plan for how we want to kind of frame this out I want to go, I think it's going to be 90 by 52 is the uh, overall size I want to try to go for. Let's go lift it up and see what we got to work with. Right. Up you go. <laughs> Goes up quicker. <laughs> you can tell the weight difference. That should be enough to work with. I'm going to get a big magnet for the back of this and we can just kind of stick it on the body wherever we want. All right, let's go grab a light. So it looks like the base of it is probably our most solid, this part right here. And we wanna come out with framing off the sides. So we wanna make it about a foot and a half wider on each side. And then we wanna get about another foot extension down there and going out. So I think we, what the best way would be to frame that out. I also want to kind of do in the corners like what they had, but I, want, I think I want to do a round pipe instead of square. And the reason for that is when this thing, say if it's got, say a four wheeler on it, imagine a four wheel sitting on top of that. And as you go up, if the weight is a little bit off, I kind of wonder, let's go get the face of it. I kind of wonder if the weight is a little different if it kind of moves around a little bit in the, the slack of the frame. My idea is to have it bolted to the floor. So I don't think the base is going to move much, but I'm worried about the decking. Uh, may have a little bit of play in it. So I kind of want to do like pipes, but have a little bit of a curve to them on each corner so that if it does go up through the hole in, in the roof or the second floor where it goes through, we could kind of rub on the you know, the two by eights, if it's off a hair, it'll just kind of center itself a little bit. 
is the idea and then also kind of make them possibly we can remove them if we don't need them say if you're, like you're loading something or if you want to load something you know from this direction my plan is to come from one side this side over here would be the loading of it and uh, make it so that uh, the poles can come out in case you want to go a different direction with it plus it also help hold all the pieces you know square on it and we can use those chains over again we'll go with something like that those chains on there that we can kind of clip them on and off the poles as we need them Again, i'm not planning on riding this up and down i'm planning on just kind of sending something up with it and then there's stairs right next to it you just walk up the stairs and you can unload it so i am going to go take a few minutes we're going to go material shopping and see what we got and see what we can do about building onto this my guess is we're probably going to cut some of this away right here and we'll try to get some square tubing that runs out past it i wonder if we could use what can we steal that might as well use that stuff over right these are bolted on let's go measure these how wide these are see if they are 52 or whatever and possibly uh do some pilfering on these these look like they're probably about 40 41 and these are 52 the 52 is perfect hopefully the same that's what i want for the width of it 52 and these are going to be roughly five foot 59 60 inches that's what we got on that all right so the 52s they look like they're just bolted on except for that the big heavy section at least the lower one's bolted on we can unbolt that one i'm gonna go take a few minutes and i'm gonna go draw on paper what we got some dimensions of what this is and try to figure it out and then we'll start cutting some pieces out so i will readily admit my writing is about third grade second maybe <laughs> all right so this is the original platform right here it's out of dimension which is 52 across by 38 wide under that original platform is that really heavy base of it which is 20 by 38 that's a really you know i think it's half inch thick um thickness of it and then the decking that's there has got another 16 inches kicking out on each side of it we want to go 52 by 90 this whole dimension here is going to be 90 going all the way across I double check that but anyway so to accomplish that we are going to need to make um framing from this point underneath this this 20 by 38 is what we're going to have to go work out from to go make we'll probably start with a square box going all the way around and then maybe we'll fill in we got i have some um diamond plate aluminum diamond plate and so my idea is we're probably going to scab on that diamond plate in this area i'm not sure whether we're going to go make you know like this one piece and a piece here and a piece here or we're going to go this one piece one piece and then this piece in the center yet but i think we'll fit we'll tack together the outer box first so we need 19 and 16 is 35 so those we measure those smaller ones at 40 something like that so that's one two and then we're going to probably go from here again too right three four of those so we're going to be four at 35 roughly and then we're going to be at 52 we're going to need one two so we're going to two at 52 and then we are going to want a full length one that's going to be 90. I don't think we have anything. We are, actually, we might be able to weld that, that one section together. So we're going to have one at 90. I'm going to go look and see what I have in my stash. See if I have a eight foot long, some kind of tubing or something we could use. And we're also going to want on these corners, don't forget, thanks for reminding me, little round holes for the posts to go in. So we're going to be a little shy of that. We don't quite need all that. We'll have those come right to there and we'll weld them. Hmm. We might have to do a, a 45 brace going across them. 
to support them. Let's um, start scrabbling, scrabbling, scabbing metal together, and we'll see what pieces we have and what we don't have. It's kind of like lay it out and start maybe chopping up some sections, maybe even tack them on. I think we can. Maybe we'll work from this forward. Let's go metal shop. I think that stuff there was roughly two by two. Whether we're going to be able to, um, we're also going to need uh, the round. I guess we're going to use round piping. That is overkill. It's about four by four. We got angle. We can use angle. We got whatever this is right here. That might be the same. That's one by. Hmm. It's like an old bike rack. I might be able to use some of this. I wonder if we don't need to. We'll keep this in mind. This this bike rack thing here. And we got over here. Another piece of four by four. We can use these. Those could be the four poles in the corner, right? We just gotta find a piece of pipe. Oh, what's that right there? That might be useful. Square piece. That's, that's kind of heavy. Watch the weed. We got a one by two right there. Let's go drag that out. Yeah, let's go drag some stuff on the floor. And got some destruction done. Got that all cut up. And kind of a general layout, what I'm thinking. Maybe something like that. And then later on, once we were putting the decking on, we could figure out if we need to add a little bit like angle iron for um, attachment points. But that should do it. I was kind of hoping I would you know, be able to get a uh, a two by two for the face of it, but I think most of the strength is going to be coming off that table outward. But this is really not as important. I'd rather have it there than, you know, any of the other spots. Again, work with what you got, right? So I'm going to take a little bit. I'm going to go over to the uh, bandsaw, you know, a little horizontal bandsaw. Start cleaning up all the edges on these, get some square corners for us after the plasma cutter mess. And uh, maybe we'll work from, we'll go those two legs out and then we'll try to work our way around the outer perimeter and then maybe fill in the legs afterwards. The whole machine is kind of sitting up about, I want to say that platform is about eight inches off the ground, but again, it's sitting on two by four. So you got to knock about, yeah, I say two inches off of that. So it'll actually be about a six inch rise from the floor. And what I might do is, Actually, it will end up being over here. I'll, I'll make like a ramp that just stays downstairs and, you know, probably permanently attach it to the floor. And then when the whole platform goes upstairs, it'll just be level. So that won't be an issue. You can kind of stop it wherever you want, you know. All right, I'm going to go make some noise and cut some of these up and uh, get back with the plasma cutter. We got to start cutting some notches in that, that plate there to get the tubing to slide through. So I kind of tack together the outer perimeter right now. So it kind of gives us our size. I may go a little wider because I made that 52 and we had that one inch to add on to the end of it. So it doesn't really matter, but I should have cut off another inch of this to uh, allow for that. Or that I could put it on the inside, one of the two. I'm still undecided. Uh, I think because I'm using the bar for our support <laughs> to kind of hold everything together. Maybe we should try to come out with the two middle posts. We got a notch into the, the center here. Uh, get them, I don't know, I, I still need something to kind of go across the, the face of it to square everything off. I don't know if I have anything long enough to deal with that. Uh, what's nice though, <laughs> it's electric. So when you're working on it, you hit the button up, you work underneath it, you want to lower it down, work under it. I think it's going to work out as a good, um, 
like repair table too, although you can't get to one side of it because the machine's in the way. But if you want to work on, you know, a bike or something, it may work as a, uh, a good work stand. All right, enough talking. Let me get back to it. Hey, we got to work under it. No problem. <laughs> How about if we take a piece of angle, lay that across it, we'll clamp that on, and we'll build out to that piece of angle. Because we got, what, four pieces to go in yet? We got here, two in the middle, and another one there. Once we get all those across, we could take that off and bring it out here. <laughs> Hopefully. So there's a frame right here it comes out. So we want to put another one right there. So let's go use that for our width. Like right there, right there. And then we're going to be the depth of it down, right? So we want right about there. Get a square. This is what we want to cut out up here. We're going to try to leave this. It'll probably help give us some strength down below. Kind of wondering if we should do a cutoff wheel or the plasma cutter. What's going to give us a better outcome? So we're going to say there to there. Of course, we need to chop it like that. That's a little shallow, doesn't it? More rectangular than square. Yeah, that's what a welder's for. Yeah, so you can get, cut that hole out. Closest to you, there's a, uh, where the, this frame is on inside here, there's a weld right here. So it kind of comes out into this passage. So maybe the plasma cutter might be a little bit better option. Let's, let's go see. That top corner got us a little bit. Undersized. I think the width we got it, we do. We got a little bit more trimming. Probably get a hair on the top, and then we'll, we'll fine tune the bottom. Definitely has to go a little more. Oh, beat that in with a hammer. That should do it. I think the only thing it's holding up now is that little bit of weld I was talking about. <laughs> it's like right there. Yeah. 
weld right in there. Nice about the plasma cutter, you, you don't even have to cut a hole. You can, all, you can use it for like gouging. There we go. And hit my clamp. That's good. Go clean that up and get a measurement how far out we need to go from that one and uh, cut ourselves a clean end. All right, decision time. Don't pay attention to this one or this one. We know a beam's going out here. I was, I have two more left. I was going to put them like that. I was kind of wondering if that would give us a better support for the outer rail. But then I started thinking about it. What if we were to come in this way, right in through there. When I dropped it in without cutting it, it's like the exact size, both sides, like it's asking for it. <laughs> they just kind of are working out that way. So again, I was thinking, you know, have another beam here to help support this bar a little further out, but we do have a fairly large span. Plus, I don't know. We can cut this pocket right out of it with the plasma cutter and we'll run the channel in. It'll bring us all the way to this beam. We could tie into this beam and square off this corner. I have a feeling that may be stronger. Plus, um, the corners are a little bent. Like That's where these poles were that were standing up. And I remember in the beginning, you even see it on this one, the whole thing was kind of like stoved over. So this is a little bit kitty wampus. You see it's not even square going down, sitting out on an angle. Not that it needs to be perfect, you know, it's just a, it's just a platform. It's not like we're it's creating a welding table. All right, I want to vote. Who says that way? Who says that way? I heard louder this way. All right, we'll go this way. <laughs> I decided to tack that last bar across the face of it. And kind of square in the hole and get rid of the visuals as far as what is there and what's not there. So, one last time, in case you want to change your vote. We can go like that, or like that. Problem is, I think if we do that, we're going to need something that's just, you know, this aluminum diamond plate is going to cover the gap, but I think it's just going to be a little too wide across. Kind of think, I'm trying to think of like framing when you're framing a house. How much you want to have in between. Plus, you're going to be putting, say, like, motorcycles in general will be in the middle, but like a four-wheeler or something, you're probably going to have a tire here, which is, that's more than enough support to be in that far away. But I think here, it's, you're going to end up getting like a, a divot in the center. If we do that, even if a tire is here, I think there's enough support of it not to screw it up. We still have to come around with um, some angle anyway, like all around here, we're going to have to take angle and tack it to it because when we go to put the floor on it, I'm, it's aluminum, you know, so I can't weld it to it, but I'm just going to run, you know, self tappers down into the framing that's there. All right. You agree? Are you good with that? <laughs> Are you sure? Let's, um, before we're screwed and we screw something up, let's get all the junk off of it. Let's go set it down on the floor and make sure we're just not smashing into anything underneath that's going to be an issue. Right now, again, everything's tacked, so we can move stuff we have to. Going down. It's about right. I knew those, you know, the, the two by twos are going to hit over there. Let's see if there's anything else. I wonder too if we should maybe, when I get it in its final location, again, it's sitting up on the two by four, so it'll be lower than this, but I wonder if I should make like little pads in the corner. It's sitting on the frame over there good, but like here, maybe we'll have like little legs or something in the far corner. So when it comes down, it kind of rests on that. So it's not trying to be so rocky. 
Anyway, I'm not hearing too much wanting to go the other way, so <laughs> never mind. Uh, let me get that notched out and we'll get those installed. Give it one more once over and then we're gonna weld the whole thing all up. And I don't think I ended up, oh, that piece we did. Other than that, everything else is pretty much from the frame that was there. I think we're gonna be about the same weight because I, I don't have those big heavy, that big one inch thick hook piece that was on there. And I see that's, so probably even be under. Yeah, maybe about the same. Because we don't have, this is still out of it. That's thick, you know, that piece. And then it was the one that was above it, which was that one. That's not in there neither. So we, that's gotta be about a hundred pounds, those two pieces taken off. Unfortunately, I haven't been uh, filming while I'm trying to work on stuff. The problem is it, it kind of takes out the camera, all the grinding and splatter. And generally when I start doing something like this, I, I burn a lens <laughs> in one fashion or another. So I was trying to shy away a little bit from that, but all the clamps are off of it. I think we got a fairly good uh, work surface for us. Uh, we may, you know, we'll, we'll put the decking on it and screw it down. And if we find that there's still, like we step on some spots, it's a little squishy. We could always come in. I still have some of that one by two. We could always add like one piece there and one piece there in those four spots. And it was stiff enough, but I have a feeling it's going to be pretty decent. The, the diamond plate that I have, although it's aluminum, it's pretty thick. So, like I said, we'll get that, uh, probably work on that tomorrow. I think today, I'm, next hour, I'm just going to run around with the welder and just kind of buzz everything together and get it over with. <laughs> and then I'll hit Home Depot, I'll grab, I got to get some, uh, some self-tappers for the aluminum to screw the decking down. And we'll work on that in the morning. Yeah, I'm liking that. It's a good size, huh? So it is 90 by 50. It's going to be actually 53. Depends on how you want to look at it because it's 53 to this. You know, you still have these uprights kind of in the way. I'm not going to take them out of there. I think they kind of help probably with a little bit of the strength. Still got to grind them and clean the, the tops off, but I think it'll be pretty decent. It's, um, yeah, of course we're wobbling on that, but, you know, it's pretty stout. Liking it. The plan comes together. All right, I'm gonna go weld. It's the next day and fresh mind. Well, we'll go that far, but let's um, go grab a piece of that diamond plate and we'll bring it over and we'll start getting an idea how we want to lay some of this out as far as, you know, cutting the sections out of it. And also what's the best idea or capacity to cut said aluminum. All right, let's go shopping. And off to the lane of sheet metal. My uh, neighbor works and does demolition. And he was, I think, at MIT, one of the MIT labs. And he called me up, said, do you want any aluminum? I guess these were like the backdrops on the walls or something from one of the labs. I said, sure. So this is what we got. I think they're actually two different thicknesses. That back one looks like it's got a little bit more. Yes, no? Let's go grab that one out of there and slide it over to the lift. And we'll use that for our, our workbench to cut it up on. Cheap. Four. Four by eight. With a hole in the center. 
Probably had a, uh, a power plug was what was in there. All right, let's go look and see how we want to make the two pieces up. I'm going to say we try making this one long strip here. We're going to have some notches to try to cut in it. And I think we're going to go probably halfway, kind of like when you're putting plywood on a side of a house. You know, we'll scab that halfway. We'll leave other half for the other piece. And then we're going to have to put some angle here for something for us to support and screw to. I don't want to go over the top of this. I'm trying to make it one level, kind of, sort of. Let me go measure that out. So we need 16 and a half by 90. Is our rough, and then we have that little notch we're going to have to go cut in it. Uh, this, I don't think we're going to be able to get this stuff off very well. It's like some kind of mastic that was probably attached to sheetrock or a wall. And I was hoping to use a plasma cutter on it. Let's go, I'm going to go mark it out with a Sharpie and we'll try it. We'll see what happens when we come to that. It may be an issue, it may not. Don't know until we try, right? I've never tried uh, cutting aluminum with a plasma cutter. So... This is your first. I know a couple of you are saying, why don't you flip it over, cut it on the other side where the glue isn't. Well, it's got the diamond plate. It, it, it's very kind of bumpy to go over. And that's my backup plan. <laughs> so, let's go see how this does. I'll use a straight edge to kind of get us in the window. And we'll just kind of run down with that. Just got to get the right spread on the torch. I'll call it right about there. You would think I would clamp it. It would probably be a smart idea. I will tell you, it's, it's hard. It's like, it doesn't want to drag on it. I'm not sure if I'm burning through or not. Let's keep going. It looked like it did, but it doesn't look, you know, from the torch. I think it kind of sealed itself back up. Let me let the compressor shut off. I'm kind of close to it. So it looks like, like I could tell on the bottom, it came through, but it kind of seems like it also sealed itself right back up afterwards, like the, the metal just kind of glued itself back together again. So I'm gonna go screw around over here, just like a scrap piece. I'm gonna try different settings, higher, lower, faster, mo torch moving, slower moving, uh, air pressure up and down, and see if I get anything that kind of burns through decent. If not, we might have to uh, regroup and try something a little different. So right now I turn the voltage way down. Let's see what that does. way down. Go way up. I think that's got it. Set it. Cr we had to crank it up. We're on to it. <laughs> you had to peg the voltage. And we go reset that line, see if we can get her to go cut for us. Eh. 
I don't think we're gonna get the results that we want. It like kinda wants to cut through it. The same time, at the same time not. Let me go see if I got a steel saw here with a blade on it. So we got this. Unfortunately, it does not have a plywood blade on it. Uh, sometimes I think you, if you reverse the blade, might be a better cut. That might be just for plastic. All right, here goes nothing. We're gonna, in that little practice area, you will work. <laughs> Let's see. It's gonna be loud. See, that works. Boy, is that gonna make a mess? There's gonna be chips everywhere. <laughs> That's just in that little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go uh, take my time and whittle out us a piece of metal and we'll plop it on a chassis over there and see how it looks. Go pop that over there and see what it looks like. Should have a half inch reveal roughly there for both sides to attach to. That seems pretty decent. That worked out pretty good. So now we just have to notch it right here with that little bit of a channel to uh, go around that. Then we'll make two more pieces. Kind of wondering what we're gonna do about that. I wonder if I have, did I cut any of this off? We could probably just put a, a steel patch over it, right? It doesn't have to be aluminum or anything. Just something to plug the hole. All right. That's definitely an improvement, huh? Let's uh, lower it down. I wanna stand on it, see how much kind of like the seams we get in those open spots. I know it's going to be tougher when it's screwed down, but I just want to see what we get if we, if I think we need to build up underneath them anymore. I'm kind of thinking we're going to be okay. We could always come in later too if we want, right? And just lift it up and, and go from underneath and add another brace if we screw it all down we find it's you know just a little kind of soft in one area oh yeah all right, i'm gonna go and knock out two more pieces for those two corners and i'll bring it back Well, I'm glad we switched over to the uh, skill saw and the plasma cutter. It makes a much you know better end too. It's not all funky and it, you can sand aluminum, but it, it clogs the paper real easy. So you know it's nicer to have the edges. You know, you can probably just hit them with a file or something afterwards. That looks pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. I got a little overzealous trying to clear a weld over here. And that guy. <laughs> I don't think we needed to do that much. But now we just gotta get some support, like right here, there's nothing for that to uh, attach to and screw on to. So let's get this off of here and we'll go around the edges with some angle iron uh, facing up and that'll give us a shelf to kind of screw down to. And we've got about an eight foot section here to work with. That should be enough. Let's just go mark that off right there. We'll cut that. Hit it with the metal glue gun.
There we go, we got a lip going all the way around and we got about 12 inches left over. All right, we should probably throw some uh, black paint on all that and kind of let it set up a little bit while I run an errand. Yeah, some of you were writing. You're gonna have to erase it now. You thought I was gonna leave those holes the way they were, didn't you? Yeah, we'll make a couple of patches for that one and it's one on the other side. Go ahead, erase your comment. I'm waiting for the paint to dry. It's a combination of satin and semi-gloss. <laughs> That's what I had. Let's see if um, these self-tappers will make it through this frame. We might have to pre-drill. This stuff's pretty thick though. Let's see what we get. You're going the wrong way. That one's gone. We'll never find that one again until it shows up in a tire. Try it like that. Work out fine. All right, I'm gonna go. We hit this with a heat gun or something. Dry up that top surface for us a little bit, and we'll throw aluminum on it. We'll start screwing her down. <laughs> End up being pre-drilling was the way to go. It's much faster. I may not have used a hundred of them. That was a, that was a box of a hundred. I say a good 90 though. Let's go uh, let it down on the floor. Put jack stands under the corners. So it's not tippy. I want you to kind of walk on it, see how it is. It's going to kind of like sag to them. I think we'll try our stomp test a foot off the ground. <laughs> Very little. I think this is fine over here. We don't, need, we don't need anything on that. Possibly. Possibly a brace across the middle of that. But it's not bad. Not bad at all. It's got like a... I would say you're walking on a carpet, but it's got like about an eighth inch, eighth or quarter inch of, of flex to it. I think we may just kind of leave that for now because I'm tired of screwing with it. <laughs> and uh, there's still gonna be some more welding when it's on site to go do. Like I said, I wanna make those poles for the corner, but until the hole is cut out in the ceiling and I kinda have that stuff finalized, I'm gonna leave that stuff open to interpretation. So one thing that's gonna be an issue is its size to try to get it through the door. It doesn't roll as it is and you know, we can kinda get like maybe a pallet jack or something underneath it to try to help move it into place. I was wondering if, well, a couple things. One, we gotta make some metal tabs that come down to the floor and they're gonna eventually get welded to the machine, but we have to lag to the floor. I'm probably gonna do that in about six or eight places. Probably grab two back on that arch, one each side there, and maybe one or two on that arm. We'll just kind of get it all the way around, lag to the floor once we get it, you know, in its place of where it's going to go and where it kind of lines up to the ceiling and and all that because we are definitely past the tip point adding that much more on it you know want to send her up let's go send her up watch it tip over and take out the yet right off the top. <laughs> it's like Willy Wonka launches. That's a pretty good surface. Who has those couple of those little holes yet? I don't know if I'm gonna screw with those. Did you say that's that's about 10 feet right there, level with that landing over there. That's all the way up. <laughs> She's a tad wobbly. Wouldn't want to try that. 
right now without being bolted. That's the fluid going back in the tank. Well, I think the uh, general concept we got pretty good. I'm gonna look around. I don't know if I have any. I'm thinking about getting some like canisters, uh, casters rather, caster wheels, and get some caster wheels. I wonder if we could temporarily weld it. Maybe get like two casters back there and might not even need it for the front because they already have wheels on them. Just so we can move this thing around and once we get it into place, we'll just, you know, cut it with a, a cutting wheel and take them off and we lower it where it should be. Uh, let me go see what I got. But it has to be something pretty heavy too. It's raining again as usual. I seem to remember, I think it, it might be upstairs. Some some torched off ones sitting in a uh, like one of these totes kind of thing. Hmm. I'll find it. It's here somewhere. You use those brackets. Those brackets might be good for. Uh... Let's take those. We're lagging it to the floor. And cut them up. All the land of wheels. I don't know. That one doesn't swivel. That one does. That one we'll use if we have to drill a hole. So what we got? I think I need two of something the same size, right? Are they similar? Could be the same height. I don't think so. Keep digging. I think they're going to be a little too light. There's two of them that... I don't think I used them in for anything. You can see like somebody torched them off of um, what they were mounted on, the cart that they were on. At least we know we have something we could work with. It is in one of these totes. Hmm. I think we're going with those. I don't have a good way to mount these wheels. I was trying to figure out maybe, you know, weld the L bracket out here and have these out in this area that can kind of spin around. But after lowering it down, this would still hit the frame out here. So I'm thinking, what if we just kind of, I got this, this cart. What if we try to get that underneath there? Problem is it's going to be tilting forward. I don't know if that's an issue or not. I wish we could get that wheel to free up, you know, like that where the motor is, and you just kind of pull around like a hand truck. I was looking for like some kind of release on this motor here to unlock that wheel, but I don't see anything that's gonna work for us. So, yeah, I'm gonna move that jack out of the way a little bit and see if we can get the, this dolly underneath, and um, I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna go fudge with that, try to get it off of this setup, see if we can get it a little bit more mobile. Again, I gotta get it on a trailer, so. That's not sketchy. So you can plop that dolly down under it. Well, we're absolutely terrible. <laughs> we're even close. Uh, I'm gonna try just to spin it with the forklift. Get it long ways and possibly I can get it on the trail. I'm also thinking maybe just that a regular hand truck and get that underneath it. We can be a little bit more mobile. The dolly thing is just it's just too tall. It was pitching too far like this. Oh, we might as well try putting something on it.
lifting it up without being lagged to the floor. Size wise looks good though. Let's go eyeball it. <laughs> this one, the wheels almost fit all the way around on the original platform. <laughs> you want to try sending it up a little bit? We'll, we'll watch it. We'll see how tippy it is. Yeah. I don't know about bringing it up 12 feet in the air, but let's just go put a little bit of load on. Let's go see how much like um, racking we do get out of it. And we'll do it from a, a safe distance. <laughs> see. And it'll give her a little bit of pushy pushy. It's pretty stable. I think it'll be fine once it's lagged to the floor. Let me uh, get you out of the stand and we'll hand hold you. We'll run it up. Get over here. All right. Getting ballsy. <laughs> I think we shouldn't push our luck. I'm out of town. Leave it in neutral, rolls off when halfway it's up there, right? I'm gonna put some tie down points on the tube. Just probably get a couple of hooks in the corner after we put those poles in there. But again, I think we're gonna do that in another, uh, another video. I'm not sure I'll either. I gotta see if the property is um, okay with filming there. If not, I may just try to get it like a tight, up tight on it and I'll show you the finished product of it installing. We'll see how that goes. But uh, that's looking pretty decent, huh? That's uh, I, my guess that four wheels probably about 500 pounds. It doesn't seem like it's fighting it at all. I think we probably have, I think we probably are still about a hundred pounds under what we uh, originally took, you know, from, from moving the metal around, take it off. Most of the metal that's on the bottom is everything that was already on the original frame. Another thing too is where the metal is, you know, where the metal is, kind of like a forklift. If you think about a forklift, um, the closer to the forks you are, the more weight it can handle, the more out from the forks, the less weight it can handle. And this is you know, probably no, no different than this. The more weight that you have right here, compared to the how much weight is out there, you, you start um, definitely cutting your weight in half as that goes. But it looks pretty stable. It, that's. That's probably about the most it's going to go on there. Maybe a garden tractor or something like that. I'm going to go pop you in the stand. I'm going to go run it up one more time and uh, hopefully not crash it. <laughs> I got it ready to... I got it ready to go load on the trailer. Let's go send it. Another out right of harm's way, kind of. <laughs> Huh? I'd definitely say that's uh that might do it. <laughs> we the uh landing that it has to go on is probably about the same height as that, so we're already about I don't know eight ten inches above it. I should do just right, and then it's just gonna be punched through a hole in the floor that's the you know maybe an inch or two larger than that gap. It's gonna come up through it and it'll just be level with the floor. You can drive right off of it. Uh, like I said, poles, you guys still get some uh, guide poles around it because I can see something like that rolling off of there if it's not locked on. And uh, yeah, you can ride it up as, you know, that thing was meant to ride up as a person. I don't know if it's quite uh, uh, under OSHA <laughs> guidelines anymore. It may have uh, changed that up just a tad. But I think that'll work out pretty good once we get the base of it, you know, logged, logged, lagged to a floor with a bunch of metal brackets and, um, and possibly even the back of it too because I think it's gonna go up against the wall. So we might be able to grab the back of the machine and lag it to yeah, the knee wall that's there also. Even give a little bit more stability. I'm just worried about a little bit like 
if it's weighted one way or another, when it goes up through the hole, if it's going to lean a little too far this way or a little too far this way or forward or back, depending on how much weight is on it. But that's going to be too determined. All right, I'm going to go let this thing back down and try to get it on the trailer so I can get it over there. I think that works out really good. I don't know if it's the first time that's ever been done to one of these or not. <laughs> I uh, claim no responsibility if you try to make one of these on your own because you're on your own. All right, guys, let me uh, go get that on the trailer. See how this works. Now tie it down just like that. Getting it off? Eh, that might be a different story. <laughs> well guys, I think it's going to be about it for this one. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to film the install or not. Again, there's you know, a couple of variables on it. Hang on, see how this video does. If this does terrible, I'm not going to follow it up with another one on it. But what I might do is uh, put a clip of it installed and you know show it operating one last time on the end of another video, but that's to be determined. For this one, guys, I'm gonna go call her, and I wanna thank you all for hanging out with me, having some fun, taking some old junk, and uh, making something different out of it. I think we're in it for 200 for the machine. Uh, what we buy, the screws? Oh, batteries. So we got 140 in batteries, so 350 we're in it so far. You know, lag bolts, some other little smalls, but after that, uh, I think we should be under 400 bucks. All right, guys, that, I'm rambling, and I'll see you soon. Later.